So how are you going to become uh, a lawyer? Most of you are going to graduate from high school, and you're going to start your undergraduate degree program. So the best piece of advice that I could give you is that when you're choosing your classes in undergraduate degree, especially for law, is take what you're interested in. Uh, there are no course requirements or prerequisites to get into law at University of Manitoba. So, but one of the strongest requirements is that you uh, have really good marks. So how are you going to get really good marks? You're going to get them by taking courses that you really like. To get into Robson Hall, which is the name of the Faculty of Law at University of Manitoba, the only thing they look at is 50% grades and 50% LSAT score, which is the law school admissions test. And I'm going to talk about that later and things that you can do to prepare for that. Uh, there is no requirement for a degree at the University of Manitoba. You usually only need two full years or 60 credit hours. However, in other law schools across Canada, you may need a degree. For example, the University of Toronto requires a three-year degree, but they also say on their website that they barely accept anybody who doesn't actually have a four-year degree. Uh, and this could be different across uh, Canada. It's very dependent on the university. Um, in most circumstances, to get into Robson Hall, they're only going to look at those two criteria, that is grades and LSAT score. But in other places, they might look at your resume, your CV. Uh, they might look at volunteer work and educational background, again. So as I mentioned, there are no prerequisites. There's no such thing as a pre-law degree in Manitoba. Well, you can take a pre-law degree at the University of Winnipeg, but it won't help your chances of getting into the law school. Uh, so when I was determining what classes I wanted to take, and at that point, I knew that I wanted to be a lawyer, already I thought to myself, well, what courses can I take that will help the type of law that I want to do? And at that time, I did not want to be a tax lawyer, that's for sure. So I took psychology courses because I thought it would help me to interact with people and um, to gain a better understanding about how people think. Uh, if you're interested in business law, I would strongly recommend going to Asper School of Business. My firm is one of the largest firms in Winnipeg, and we have a very large department for corporate commercial. Uh, and they consider people that have both a commerce degree, which you get at Asper, and a law degree to be a huge asset. Uh, if you are interested in the court side of things, so you want to be either a litigator who sues people or who defends people who are being sued, or you want to be a criminal lawyer, either for the prosecution or defense, I would strongly recommend taking courses like um, psychology, sociology, and um, conflict resolution. All right, so I referenced earlier that in order to get into law school, they look at what's called an LSAT score. So that's, again, the law school admissions test. And I posted a whole bunch of links that if you're interested, you can go to and click on. And they're going to provide you with resources that will help you score better on the LSAT. Again, in Manitoba, it's weighted 50% of your entrance requirements. So one day, 50% of determining whether or not you're going to get in. I took. Uh, a course provided through Princeton Review in order to uh, beef up my knowledge of the LSAT. And I found it very helpful. I also read their book, and it was really good as well. So the LSAT is broken into a whole bunch of different multiple choice sections. Uh, they can range from short answer multiple choice, so you read a paragraph, answer a question about that paragraph. There's games, so logic puzzles and and, and games. And most people have the uh, hardest problem with that, because the reason they're going into law is they weren't maybe that great at math and science to begin with. Uh, and the third area is reading comprehension. So you read an entire page of script and answer 10 questions about that page. The content of the L LSAT is intimidating, but most people can handle it. Where most people fail in LSAT is being able to do it on time. For each of those sections, you're given a limited amount of time, and the average person doesn't complete five to 10 questions out of a 30 question section on time. Uh, so what I did was I ordered a whole bunch of sample exams, and these are great because they're not just made up sample exams. You actually order exams that previous kids or students have taken. Uh, there's LSATs a couple times a year, I think three times at the University of Winnipeg and the University of Brandon. Everybody in North America writes the exact same LSAT at the exact same time. So if we start at 8 a.m., the kids in Vancouver are starting at 6 a.m. Uh, so I ordered these sample exams, and I just 
every day would start. The first one I wrote, I didn't time myself. I just saw what I would get if there was no time restraints. And then I started slowly timing myself and working my way down to what the actual requirements were. And it was very helpful. So again, those are the websites posted. And then you start law school. And in first year law school, it's incredibly intimidating. You have no electives at the University of Manitoba, so you're put into courses. You're in a course load that far exceeds uh, the, a full course when you're just taking your undergrad degree. So usually, uh, I think you're in five courses at a time, and at one point in first year, you're in seven. So two extra courses. The reading is extremely tough. Uh, probably if you read everything that you're assigned, you're reading between 50 and 100 pages per night. The real difference, though, is that it's 100% final exams. So I went from this huge step from high school to uh, university where you know maybe in high school the an exam would count for like 10 to 20 percent and then in undergrad it counted 30 to 50 percent and now I'm taking a hundred percent finals you only have one shot uh, but like anything else it does get easier although the workload increases in second year everybody in our school had a better understanding of how to complete it uh, and how to be efficient with their time and so by the time third year rolled around, we were all so good at it that it was just a great year to make friends and to participate in um, other opportunities that the law school offers. I'm going to advocate for the U of M for a while, but you should apply to as many schools as possible if you're going to apply to increase your chances of getting in. And the reason I'm going to advocate for the University of Manitoba is because it's a very hands-on uh, law program. It's not just reading books, reading cases and writing exams. It's also a lot of hands-on work. So for example, in second year, we do an entire moot trial or a mock trial. And we get paired into teams. We hire first year students to play as our witnesses. We're given a case with evidence, photos of crime scenes, uh, and whatever else the professors of the class can think of. And we actually do a trial in front of a judge who delivers a verdict at the end. And so it's programs like that that really give you a better idea of what uh, your life is going to be like as a lawyer. On the corporate commercial side, they offer a program called Out of the Deal, where you actually negotiate against opposing counsel and try to get your clients the best contract. Um, and you may also take part in a business acquisition as part of that class as well. You also can have direct contact with clients during uh, law school by participating in programs like the Legal Help Center, Pro Bono Students, or Legal Aid. At legal aid, you'll actually be volunteering and doing small criminal procedures, such as bail hearings, while you're a student. I volunteered for Pro Bono Students Association, and what I did was I worked for a call center where people would call in and have no idea where to turn their legal problems to. I would either provide them, not with legal advice, but legal uh, research or legal information regarding their subject. If it was something where they definitely needed legal advice from, we had lawyers at our disposal and we would refer them out to those lawyers. I should also mention that there is no, you can't specialize in a certain area of law at the University of Manitoba or any law schools for that matter. You get an LLB and it's after you graduate from law school that you find out what type of lawyer you want to be. And as I will show you later, there's almost an infinite amount of practice areas uh, that you can practice while being a lawyer. So in second and third year, you get electives and you could take courses you're interested in, but as long as you meet the minimum of credit hours required to graduate from law, it doesn't really matter what courses you take. Once you graduate from law school and in third year, you apply for what's known as an articling position. Now this is definitely the most intimidating part of being a lawyer. You work hard hours, you get paid but minimally, and it's really your year to prove to the firm that you belong there as a lawyer. So um, how it works is you're assigned to a principal at your law office, and their job is to get you work in as many different practice areas as possible. While you're also working full time, if not double time in some instances, you're also participating in a program called CPLED, which gives you an assignment and readings to complete once a week for an entire unit. And then at the end of the unit, you get a more in-depth assignment that will either test your written submission ability or your oral advocacy. So sometimes it is hands-on, similar to the way that it was uh, in third year when I described the mock trials. Uh, 
information about CPLED is available at the website cpled.ca. So uh, contrary to popular belief, there's no bar exam in Manitoba. You do not write uh, an exam to be accepted to the bar. All you have to do is uh, meet the minimum hours work in a year and complete the CPLED program and you'll be eligible to qualify for the call to the bar, which is a ceremony that's actually a court proceeding which dons you as a lawyer and the ability to practice law in Manitoba. So the legal profession, and this, you know, some of this will be decided based on where your articling position will be, but I've broken up the legal profession into two main sectors, either private practice or in-house counsel. Within each of these sectors, there's an infinite possibility of different practice areas that you can work in, and I will get to that in a minute. So I'll talk about the private sector first. I work in the private sector. I work at Pablado. It's one of the biggest law firms in Winnipeg. And we cover almost every practice area except for criminal law. So, but there's other options in the private sector. You can work for a medium firm. You can work for a small firm. And at some point, you can go out on your own and operate a sole proprietorship. Working in private practice, I equate a lot to working in a business. So for example, a trade, such as a plumbing company. When you start out your company, you've got to put a lot of hours in at the beginning so that you can build up your clientele, otherwise known as your book of business. This is no different than uh, private practice. You're trying to get customers. How do you get customers? They need to have heard of you. You need to have gained experience where you're able to meet their needs. Um, one of the great reasons why I like working for a big firm is because in the first couple of years, the lawyers are my clients. And how that works is that for example, a partner at my firm has a big bank as a client. Well, that big bank doesn't want to hire a junior lawyer. The reason they want to hire a partner is because they have all their years of experience. How I get my experience is that I treat our partners as my clients. So I go to them and say, hey, do you need any help on a file? And they say, sure, help me with this file. And maybe that will eventually put me into contact with that client. And once that partner retires or once I get more senior, I can start doing more work for that client on my own. Uh, the great thing about medium and small firms is that you probably have more ability to set your own standards and your own expectations. Uh, usually big firms are um, more known for like longer hours and for a harder work ethic. But again, the more you work, the more experience you get and the better your lawyer you're going to be at the beginning. I wouldn't recommend going out as a sole proprietorship too early. Um, the reason for that is, is you won't have those facilities to ask questions if you need questions. The other thing that I can do is that if once I'm done completing a task, I've drafted a contract, I can get that lawyer to review the contract who gave it to me and he'll let me know what mistakes I made, how I can improve in the future. So that's a great thing to have as well. Uh, the other type of legal profession there is, is in-house counsel. Now this is more like a job or an occupation. You're gonna work for a company or you're gonna work for the government uh, and likely you're gonna have more of a work-life balance, nine to five, but you're also not gonna be able to set your own hours in certain circumstances. Uh, so dealing for the government, you can be any type of lawyer again. So the government hires lawyers to uh, handle their real property claims. So that's like any transfers of land, uh, which goes through, for example, the Winnipeg Land Titles Office. They have lawyers that work for them. Crown's counsel is an in-house counsel. So Crown counsel are the prosecutors. They're the people that advocate to put criminals into jail or, could, or, uh, or people accused of a crime. There's also the tax court. So every once in a while, I have to refer out a tax court. I deal in tax, but I don't do the litigation side of it. So when I do, there's often a lawyer at my firm who will handle that part. Uh, there's also companies like Manitoba Hydro, whose government, investors group, and you could be doing just as many practice areas as you would in private practice, but working for an in-house counsel as well. So lawyers and investors groups will consistently be doing mergers, acquisitions, reorgs. They will consistently be doing uh, acquisitions uh, and financing especially. So as I referenced earlier, there are infinite, infinite practice areas in the practice of law. Uh, commercial, civil litigation, real estate, immigration, estate planning, constitutional, just to name a few. One of the big areas of separation that usually people categorize lawyers in is either barristers or solicitors. In plain English, that means court lawyers 
or business lawyers. I'm a business lawyer, uh, and I will hopefully, therefore, never have to go to court again for the rest of my life. But on the, on the flip side, there are people who love going to court. That's what they live for. That's where they get their thrill, their kick. So, and sometimes they, they cross over into each other. So as I referenced, uh, I often help people plan their businesses in order to obtain the most tax efficient results. So, but sometimes clients come to me and they're already in tax trouble. So we might set up an appeal with Canada Revenue Agency in order to try to settle the dispute outside of court. But if ultimately the two parties can't come to an amicable result, they will go to court and, and argue over it. So one of our lawyers at our firm, another associate, is a tax litigator. So often I will, when, when it comes down to it, give that file to, to that associate and say, you know, can you help me with this file? They're gonna go to court over this. It's time for you to take over. So there is, they do connect, um, and, and that, can often, that can often happen in many different areas. Typically, courtroom lawyers uh, will relate to civil litigation, so again, anything where somebody's getting sued or suing over, and that can be a whole bunch of different areas. It could be construction, it could be negligence, just to name a few. Uh, they can also do family law, so divorce law, property settlement, is an area which courtroom lawyers are very involved in. And then obviously there's criminal law. So you can either be a defendant for the accused or you can be a crown prosecutor as I spoke to earlier. On the business side, there's always new areas developing as well. So one of the great ways that you can start making your book of business is to get an area that's just developing, a niche area, and really develop your skills in that area and become the leading lawyer in that area. The best example I can think of to that is a lawyer at our firm, one of our partners named Brian Bowman. Uh, he's a fairly young partner and he's considered the leading expert in Manitoba on privacy law. And the reason that he was able to obtain uh, the title as leading lawyer in Manitoba is because he found an area which nobody had developed, which was just starting out. People had just started to realize that there were issues with it. And so he helped not only develop it, but also put his name out there as one of the only lawyers in Manitoba to practice in that area. There are also some other jobs in the practice of the law that aren't just lawyers. So our firm has um, 60 lawyers and we have about probably the same amount of staff members and they can include legal assistance, which is a course that you take, I believe at Red River, you can also take it at Hertzing College. Um, and I think it's a two-year program, and basically the role is exactly that, to assist the lawyers. And believe me, when I started at Pipleto, my assistant had been working as a legal assistant for about 20 years, and without a doubt, she still knows more about the practice of the law than I do, and she definitely knows the ins and outs of the system. Uh, a lot of times, legal assistants are charged with the responsibility to do corporate searches, real estate searches, and things that regard. They also often do the first draft on certain documents, um, but obviously everything has to be finalized by the lawyer. Another job is a paralegal, and I think there's additional education you can get to fast track you into the paralegal world. Uh, I know at our firm, often legal assistants who have experience in a single area are often promoted to the position of paralegal and they have a little bit more responsibility, or they have quite a bit more responsibility and ability to finalize documents than um, the legal assistants do. And at our firm, we have uh, corporate paralegals, so they do all the annual returns and documents related to corporate corporations uh, and update the corporation's minutes books. We have um, a litigation paralegal, and I have never worked with them, so I actually don't know what they do. Uh, we have uh, real estate paralegals, which people use a lot because real estate paralegals can basically cover um, almost an entire transaction in a basic house sale uh, from the beginning to the end. <clears throat> you could also become a judge. Now, only lawyers can become judges in Canada, so and usually you practice for 10 to 15 years and then you can apply to become a judge as well. Finally, there's clerkship, which is another college course that you take, and clerks work in the court, they assist the judge, and they're basically charged with the responsibility to record everything that happens uh, in court. 